This is going to be a great sister to sister. Find out why our sister Flo calls God daddy. Find out what to do with a broken relationship and find out how not to be bitter. Be better. Find out what the sisters think. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. If you've never seen our show before, welcome to our home and our hearts. We are five opinionated, beautiful women of God and we bring, really, we bring our hearts and the answers to the questions of the world from a biblical standpoint. But this first question is so personal to us. <laughs> Uh-huh. Listen to this one. And, and you wrote this. You wrote this. Phyllis, we're so glad that you watch and you wrote in. Well, actually, you called us and you asked, why does Flo, from sister to sister, our sister, call God Daddy? So I'm going to go right to Flo. Hi, Phyllis. <laughs> I'm glad you wrote that question. Um, you know, I want to start with number one. When I teach on prayer, I think you've heard me say before that prayer is m my deepest passion. If God said, I'll take all your gifts and talents from you, but I'll let you keep one, the one that I would choose would be prayer. That being said, is that out of all the things that the disciples seen Jesus do, there was only one thing that they asked him to teach them, and that was prayer. They didn't say, teach us how to raise the dead, teach us how to open up blinded eyes. They didn't say any of that. So as a result, I do a lot of teaching on prayer. And what I found is that a lot of people struggle in their relationship with God because they can't relate to him as Abba God, Daddy God. Most people just see God as some mystical, something out there in the force, in the cosmos, you know, the force be with you, the universe, and whatever you want to call it. Um, God to me is daddy. It is a very personal relationship. What has helped me in that is that I was blessed with some very good earthly male models who were, had a large part in uh, raising me. And then I probably had the best father um, I feel in the world, uh, which has a lot to do with my personality makeup. And you know, there's a scripture that says, mm -hmm. if your earthly father knows how to do good, I'm paraphrasing, right. Yeah, right. then how much more your heavenly father? Well, you know, my earthly father would do anything for me. I mean, if I thought I wanted it, I was getting it. And you know, there's a scripture that says, while you're yet asking. So I can relate to daddy very easily. Um, meaning Abba God, very easily as my father. I also have a constraint in my heart to help others. It, it grieves my spirit when I listen to others say that um, I can't relate to him as daddy because you're missing out on a major yes, part right. of him, of his character, of, mm -hmm. of who he is and who you are to him. Mm -hmm. So I have a very intimate relationship with God. Um, I know that I am loved by him. I know that his love for me is unconditional. I know there's nothing I can do that would cause him to dismiss me. Just like with my natural dad, yeah. there was nothing I could do uh, that would cause me to be dismissed from his love or his grace. And he was always looking out for my best. So why do I call him daddy? Because that simply is who he really is, and not just to flow, but to our elder brother, Jesus. Right. And isn't it interesting that that's the first line that he gave them in the model prayer, not that you pray that way repetitiously, but in giving them the structure on prayer, he started off with, mm -hmm. you start with our Father. So my prayer for you, Phyllis, is that you will get to know God as daddy. Well, yes. doesn't Abba mean daddy? Yeah, in yeah. Aramaic, it actually does mean the word daddy. Abba. Yeah, when I looked it up, and the only place, Jesus used that in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said Abba. He said Abba, Father, all mm -hmm. things, Daddy, Father, mm -hmm. all things are Abba possible God. for you. 
but if it be your will, let this cup pass. Isn't it interesting that in his agony, in his suffering, he called the father daddy. I know you oh, have my right, best right. interest, even when, I, and he, they said he suffered great drops of blood. He was agonizing with the father but he called him daddy. It's so precious. It and is. his identity, because he said, I must be about my father's business. Mm -hmm. So yeah. whose business if I, am I about if I'm not about daddy's right. business? Yeah. Am I about promoting myself, my own agenda? Yeah. Jesus was about promoting his father's business. I think a good scripture reference too to tag on to what you're saying is Galatians 4, uh, 4 through 7. And the whole reason that God sent his son was so that we might receive the full rights as sons and daughters of God. Therefore, we can cry out, Abba, Father. And so, you know, I don't say daddy. I might say dad. Hey, dad. I I've got a problem, so you've got a problem. And, but there's something that happens when instead of him being Lord, Master, right. Teacher, Savior, you're like, Dad, Father. It, it's, it's very intimate, it's very personal, mm -hmm. and it's very now, and it's very real, and it's very present, and it's, it, 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 it makes it, I don't know, it, it, it connects it more than some distance, like Flo was saying, some mm -hmm. distance God of the creator of the world, the universe. He's my father and he loves me. And, and if you believe that, your whole life will change, really. Your prayer life will change. Your, who you are in Christ will change. Your relationships will change. That's right. Because he's That's your father. Right. But well, you I know, call the, my the, dad the, daddy, the, too. The thing of it is, is that as well as that was said, most of us do not address him as daddy. Mm -hmm. We yeah. don't. And I think the beauty of it is, is as you said, you know, he's your teacher, he's master, he's Lord of Lord, yes. King of Kings. But the beauty of it is, is my daddy mm -hmm. is King of Kings right. and right. Lord of Lords, right. Alpha, Omega, right. beginning and ending and all the other names that you can come well, up with. Well, thank you for being, being our teacher today. Yes. Yay, daddy. daddy. Yay, daddy. But I'm going to go to the next question because this is really good and someone else wrote to us, Suzanne, and she's 78 years old and we thank you for writing to us. She wrote to ask, what should she do with her sister? This is a broken relationship. The sister doesn't have anything to do with her. She had texted her sister, trying, trying, trying. She wants to know how does she move on with the loss of that relationship, how do you move on from a strained relationship? I don't know. Corey, what do you think? Well, I just want to say to Suzanne, first of all, I am really sorry for your loss because that is a deep hurt. That is, that's a loss. That's almost like grieving a death, honestly, to have that kind of loss in your life where you're where you have a relationship where they don't, you know, where you just don't have that relationship anymore. I've and had, you feel like it's... Yes. Like, I've had times in my life where there's been times where, you know, my sister and I aren't talking, and it does feel like such a loss, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's just for a short period of time. So to have this kind of um, break in a relationship, I know, is a loss. So... Um, I know that she mentioned that she tried to reach out and text. Right. So I, I do kind of want to say, you know, text isn't the best way <laughs> to try to Good. solve problems in a relationship, Amen. you know. So I, I do want to encourage, you know, don't, don't use text. You know, you can't, there's nuances. There's, you can't read the right emotions in text. You can't always get across feelings point. and you know you just sometimes there's just that loss of translation when you're using text so pick up the phone or better yet face to face mm -hmm. where you can get across where you can you know touch a hand and you can just you can show that love that's there and just say you know I'm sorry you know just just push aside that pride and try to reconnect because you don't want to lose that relationship. That's right. We're, you know? we're saying it's a broken relationship, but I would not give up. Right. Mm -hmm. I was, I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. for me, the first thing I thought about, Corey, was why are you saying it's lost? Right. Right. The right. death and life are in the power of the tongue. Right. Right. Death in life. Notice that the word death comes yes. first because it's so easy for us to speak death mm -hmm. and we have to consciously think to speak life. Why can't this relationship right now just 
just kind of being a dormant right. stage for a season, just like, you know, the snow comes down from heaven to water the earth. Doesn't seem like there's any activity happening, right. but it's watering and then come spring, we see all these plants. Sure. Right. So I would like to encourage her to spend time in prayer because mm -hmm. that is a relation. You shared a womb together. You are connected by a bloodline. And then if you both know Christ, you're connected by the div divine bloodline of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So don't stop fighting. Go into pursuit. And as you, I love what you said mm -hmm. about, you know, don't use text. You know, I, we, I think we get so used to yeah. it. And like you said already, things get misread. Yeah. But one thing that doesn't get misread is calling on God. If I call on him, he will answer. And God is a restorer of relationships. Right. And so Suzanne, as you can tell from what we're saying, and especially what we said about Abba Father, Daddy Father, there is hope for your relationship because there is hope in Him always. So don't give up, Suzanne. And Phyllis, who wrote to us, call on Daddy because He loves you. We love you too. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Sisters House. There's so much conversation. We're gonna bring back that relationship topic another time because we hope that you're not broken. We have so much to talk about with that one. But this question, <laughs> oh my goodness. Wait, you hear it. Lisa, she wrote in and she wants to know, is it sin to wear pants? And I thought, really? But then guess what? There are people Amy, tell us. Yeah, well, like my grandma was uh, raised in a church in a denomination where they wore dresses, skirts. And so my dad and mom kind of took that on for a while, that same, because you, you, you kind of follow along in your parents' footsteps and then mom and dad realized, you know what? Maybe it's not sin if I wear pants and maybe if I let my girls do sports, they're gonna have to wear pants. And if they're gonna be in cheerleading or in softball or in gymnastics, like, they're, they're, they're not gonna be able to do this in skirts. And so they got mm -hmm. a little bit freer and I finally could wear pants to church. I'm not even kidding, like it was a big deal. And then we come to Pittsburgh, right? And we're planting a church and that mindset was still in me, right? And I'm thinking- Oklahoma. Yes, and I'm thinking about like, like for some reason we approach God, we come to his house based on how we're dressed. And, and, and I thought, you know what? Something is wrong with me when I'm looking at what people are wearing, if they're right with God or not. Are you kidding me? Come as you are. Mm -hmm. Your clothing is not sin. What your choice, if you're in booty shorts and you're on the beginning journey with God, I want you in church. I want you to follow <laughs> God. Good. You're not gonna be denied by God for what you have on. Now, as you grow up in God, there's a thing called modesty. You can have immodest right. skirts. You can have immodest see-through tight stretchy pants mm -hmm. that we can see your underwear through. So, I mean, it, but clothing itself is not a sin. <laughs> that is, that does, is any, awesome. does anyone else have anything about this yeah, pants? I, I do also. You know, I respect cultures, even the early <laughs> Christian culture of they, whatever is of not of faith is sin. So they are believing in their faith or in their culture that this is a part of their dress and their style. And I respect that. But if you use that, it says having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. We can look like we're godly or we are respecting our religion or we're cult our culture on the outside, but God says, I think it was in Samuel, he told the prophet Samuel, look Samuel, you, man looks at the outside, but I look at the heart. I chose David as my king, the young shepherd boy. So we can't look at the outer and judge by the outer. Only God really knows the heart. Well, well I've got you. 
I'm going to ask you this next question while let I've me, got Kim, you. Let oh. me just, just jump in here real quick, only because for the sake of our viewer, and, and, and I want to be sensitive to the time, this question really comes out of Deuteronomy 22 and 5. And it, you talk about taking scripture out of content and what was going on back then. And, and if you read it, you'll see that they're even talking about, well, if you want an egg, you know, don't eat the chicken. And it, it, it has a lot mm. to do with law. Laws. It has right. a lot to do with law. And so um, in Galatians, uh, it reads like this in verse 20. I got to take my glasses off to see. Verse 24, so that the law has become our tutor to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor, no. for you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So I just wanted to just reiterate that it because, is the law. yeah, that that's more coming from under the law as well as, as what she's saying about different uh, circles. But that's where that originated from in its taking scripture out okay, of context. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So it's the law. But while I've got you, okay, I, well, you know did. why I wanted to ask you this one? Because mm -hmm. you're my attorney girl. Mm -hmm. And I want to know when, because you <laughs> see all these crazy things, but what do you do if you see your children, because mm -hmm. you have five, mm -hmm. and making the same mistakes and wrong decisions as you did growing up? And you see this in your court too. Yeah, what do it, you do? It's funny that you say my children, so I'll call them all my kids, right. whether they're in the law or right. whatever, because right. I feel a tender heart towards I all of them. I know you do. And I think the biggest thing, when I read this question, because my kids didn't do the same things I did, but different challenges and so on. But I have to say this first. When Adam and Eve sinned, they felt shame. And I think it's so important, and my mother's going to get me on this because I'm not <laughs> always good about it. Um, God didn't shame them. He went into the garden and said, he walked with them in the evening and said, Adam, Eve, where are you? They hid from God out of their shame. So when we're approaching, we're parents as instructors, as guides. All right, I might have done these same things or I might have done this, but you're doing this. We're instructing them. We're not shaming them because we were disappointed in their actions. So it's not judging their themselves that they're quote bad. It's trying to instruct them in walking in a good path. And I think that's what God was doing. He wasn't, he was saying, where are you? I'm gonna walk with you. And they said, we felt shame. So I think the first thing in this, don't make your, ch the first step is don't make them feel shame. I'm disappointed, you're bad, you're no good, you're gonna amount to nothing. That's all shame. You're an instructor, not a, a, not a the king in that shame. That is so good, you're shaking your head. Yeah. Well, I mean, I thought that's about, good in a good way. Uh, yeah, I think I thought about more along the lines of w if you see them kind of headed down a path, mm -hmm. if you see them making decisions where, you know, they're making decisions that, you know, led down this path where you were. And I thought about warning signs, like if you're mm -hmm. on a highway and, you know, miles ahead, there's going to be a lane closing. They warn you, like, miles and miles ahead, lane closing, lane closing. There's signs and signs and signs. And so I thought about that. You know, they give you all these warning signs. That's what we should do with our kids. You give them warning signs. You, there's signs all along the way. There's signals. You can't change the lane for them, mm -hmm. but you can give them the signs. You can. Oh, you That's cannot good. take the wheel. You cannot change it for them. You can't can't make the decision for them, but you can give them all the signs along the way. You always have those idiot drivers that don't change the lane until the last second, even though they had miles and miles of signs. So your kids might not heed the signs, but you can give them every warning signal along like the way. That. Do you correct mm -hmm. the kids? Flo. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Okay. I can move to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> the next question. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. She does. It's the wisdom of flow. I, I, I know. I love you so much. I love you so much. I am gonna, I am gonna, I'm gonna go to the next one. We're, we can have a whole show on the wisdom of flow. But this next question is so good because I know that we all have bitterness in our hearts sometime. So how do we fight bitterness? Listen to this. When God uses others instead of me. 
Hmm. Well, and, and I've seen people struggle with this a lot. Why are they teaching the Bible study and I'm not? Why are they in the life group and I'm not? Why, why is God? And I say, wait, 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 stop. Change your perspective. Don't get bitter. What if, what if, can't you trust God with your life, with your leadership, with your career path? that he will open the right doors for you. He'll shut the other doors. You'll be in the right place at the right time, in the right season. Just keep working on yourself, keep preparing. And to know that it's not like some magical moment when God just uses you all of the sudden in some place. God can use you every day to love your kids, to lead in your home, to, to, to help in the community. At, like find ways that God can use your hands and feet to touch other lives. So if it's a ministry thing, I say, stop it. Mm -hmm. Trust God, wait for his timing. Don't force it, don't watch, don't compare yourself to others. Amen. It's just you and him, change your perspective. Don't get bitter, say, thank God I'm not doing that because God's got something better. Right. Right. You know, right. to me, the, the question shows about what I would refer to as recycled Christianity. It's kind of just like, you know, we have learned instead of how to seek God for ourselves, I'll watch Joyce Meyer and then I'll regurgitate Joyce Meyer, right. what she says without her level of revelation, which right. is simply just regurgitation. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, the other thing is we have came away from discipleship. When I am discipling, like mm -hmm. I always talk to Corey, I make um, comments to Corey about uh, obviously honoring her biological mother, but I can tell that her spiritual mother has made a great deposit yes. in her. In fact, I had asked to, to meet her um, because there's something in me that has an honor there for her because I see the fruit of discipling. And I can promise you that neither her biological mother or her spiritual mother are sitting there at home watching her going, well, why aren't I in TV? And why am I? They're oh, seeing the yeah. fruit of their labor. Right. So we have come away from discipling and um, that is very dangerous for us as a yep. church. Right. Um, we, we look for relevancy and we will prostitute, forgive me for being so graphic and pimp out whatever, as long as it keeps me relevant. You know, mm. I'll have all the young people in my church if it keeps mm. me relevant, but I won't teach them about how to honor mm. and, 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 and protocol and how, what, what's the baton I'm passing on to you, you know? But I like the fact that you draw and you keep my church well, relevant. I like the fact that you tune in to Sister mm. to Sister each time that we come into your home, as you can see, we bring the heart and love of Jesus Christ from us to you each time Amen. we come into your home. See you next time. We had a lot of great questions from our viewers today. And as you know, we always end sister to sister with a scripture and today's scripture can be found in Colossians 3.13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Right now in our country, it's a divided time in our country. And we, just as we heard in our show, sister is pitted against sister, brother is pitted against brother, and it's a difficult time. And as we heard in this verse, bear with one another, bear with one another with love. You might have a grievance with someone. It might even be a grievance that is legitimate grievance, but put that aside, forgive one another. I know that you can think of someone right now that you need to forgive. I know that when you sit there and think about someone that has hurt you, someone that has deeply hurt you, we all have someone in our lives that if we stop and think there's that person in our lives that has hurt us that we need to forgive. But we have been greatly forgiven. So forgive as we have been forgiven by Jesus Christ. Amen. And Amen. we also end each sister to sister with this scripture. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a sister sharpen the other. You see, family, these girls make me a better Kathy.